All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. I'm setting up a new camera, as you guys can see. I want to make sure it's working better because I hate streaming on my phone and commenting on there as well at the same time. It doesn't, doesn't work out for me because I'm too close to the camera and I'm not really a fan of streaming on the phone. So what I'm going to do is set it up on my phone, uh, but I'm also going to watch it and comment on my laptop. Now, I want to make something very clear. I'm going to get right to it because a lot of people don't like me stalling and waiting for people coming in here. So I apologize. I want to make everybody happy. So what's up to everybody that's joining in? Um, I want to touch base on the GT500 and the weight of the vehicle and that it was leaked in a, a recent source book uh, not too long ago. Before I, I touch base on that though, I, I just want to explain that how many times I did videos and said that the new GT500 was going to be 4,250 pounds. Now that came from my sources in Detroit and I explained that to a lot of people that this was going to be a very heavy GT500. And there was quite a few people that came into my videos and were saying, hey, it's not going to be 4,200. You're lying. It, it's going to be light. That's not going to happen. I don't know where your sources are getting this information from, but I told you guys time and time again, this was going to be a very heavy GT500 and it is. Now that's not the topic of conversation just, you know, that I wanted to bring up for the whole video is what I said was going to happen, but I just want to clarify. I did say it was going to be heavy. Now, let's get right to it. The GT500 is going to be 4,225 pounds for the base model. We're not talking about the track model because that's going to be 10, 15, maybe even $20,000 more and good luck getting an allocation for it. 90% of the GT500s on the road or more are going to be the base model, which is over 4,000 pounds. Now, before we get into more specs like that, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the fact that 4225 is only 200 pounds lighter than the Challenger Hellcat or Challenger Hellcat Red Eye. It's only 220 pounds lighter. That's insane when you think about it because the previous GT500s from 2007 through, uh, through 2009 were 3,900 and something, almost 4,000 pounds. And then the GT500 after that was about the same weight, 3950 roughly. And then the newest one was 3948, I believe, or 3958. So they're all relatively within the 3900 to 4000 range. A lot of the uh, Ford, you know, fan base and especially GT500 lovers have been saying that the new GT500 is going to be a lot faster because it has 760 horsepower versus 662 of the previous GT500. Well, the previous GT500 also weighed about 250 pounds less. So when you think about it like that, that extra weight has negated half of the horsepower gains. Now, before anybody comes in here and thinks that I'm talking crap on the GT500, forget the weight, forget the drama. Let's stop talking about this quarter mile and what's going to beat the red eye. Stop worrying about if it's going to beat the red eye or beat the Hellcat or compete with the Camaro on a race course. Let's just forget all that. We've become so greedy. The simple fact of the matter is the GT500 looks fabulous. It's a beast. It really is. And it's just one of the best Mustangs, if not the best Mustang ever designed. And I love it. I don't care if it does quarter mile in 10.5 or 11.5. It is a beast and it looks great. And it's going to be baseline MSRP at a good price. The markups are going to kill it. But let's forget about the markups. Let's forget about the weight. Let's forget about all that. Too much drama, guys. Um, I'm not here to talk shit on the GT500. You know, even though I said it was going to be heavy, and it is, it's still a beast. I think we've become somewhat desensitized on horsepower and performance because of what Mopar is doing, or Dodge, and, you know, what the ZR1 has now done, and, and the fact that we've expected more from the Mustang. I think the GT500 is going to just downright be nasty on a road course in a drag strip. I really do. And I just think we've become, like I said, desensitized to the weight. This whole issue has become over overblown and, and just out of proportion, if you want to know the truth. Now, the one problem that I do see with the GT500 is the fact that it weighs 4225, but the bigger problem is not just the weight, it's the distribution of the weight. The source books are indicating the GT500 has 56% of its weight on the front end. So 5644 uh, is going to be the weight balance of the GT500. And that's not good for a road course, especially when you're at 4225. If you know anything about road coursing or going around corners, 4200 pounds with that much uneven weight distribution 
is not going to be ideal. Does that mean it's going to be bad on a road course? Absolutely not. It's still going to dominate pretty well, but it's not going to be as efficient as the ZL1 1LE. The GT500 does not look like it's going to beat the 1LE, even though it has 100 more horsepower, it weighs 450 pounds more and the distribution of weight isn't as good. So the question here is, can it compete with the ZL1 and can it compete with the Red Eye on a drag strip? Now, the answer to those questions based on specs is no, because the fact that the GT500 only weighs 200 pounds less than a Challenger, Red Eye, the Red Eye still has 37 more horsepower, which indeed does make up for 200 pounds, barely. It's going to be a close run, most likely. It's going to depend on a lot of factors. It's hard to say which one's going to be faster, but it's just not going to be a Red Eye killer from the factory. It's just not going to be that. It'll beat the Hellcat. It'll beat the Scat Packs. It won't beat the Demon or the Red Eye at a drag strip. And on a highway roll, it's all going to come down to a bunch of different factors. I'm not here to spec all this out just based on paper. As far as a road course, it's going to be a little tough considering that the 1LE ZL1 is lighter and has better weight distribution. So that's going to be remain to be seen uh, if the GT500 can compete there. But what I want to say, guys, is let's forget about crunching numbers. Let's forget about the drama and let's just love the car for what it is. Because the GT500, if you're asking me, do I like the GT500? I do. I don't hate it. I love it. I'm just putting facts out there. It, A, it's going to be heavy, just like I said it was. It probably won't beat the ZL1 in the turns, but in the straights it will. That might make up for it, depending on the road course. It could be a driver's and a road course race. With the Hellcat, it'll win. With the Red Eye and Demon, it's remained to be seen. But I'm going to crunch some numbers now for you on a calculator I have. Thank you very much, Miles, for the donation. I really appreciate it. I will go right into comment reading uh, here in a couple of seconds so that anybody who's watching this and it isn't live, I won't have them waste their time by watching all that. We're going to just be diving content for 8 to 10 minutes. So that this way we're getting to the point. We're getting the specs out there and we're talking about it. Then we'll go to comment reading and I'll try to catch up. Okay, so... Um, uh, I appreciate that really much, uh, American terrorists. What a name. Oh, my God. Um, now, I want to clarify something, though. So everybody sit tight. I want to clarify something right quick because I'm switching the screen and I can't see comments right now. Um, now, I have a calculator in front of me. But I'm just going to tell you guys, this is based on weight and horsepower. How many pounds per horsepower, okay? This means if the driver is perfect. So if you say the old GT500 ran such and such time with, you know, the new one's going to be faster, this calculator is going to base the time and 60 foot based on weight to horsepower with perfect driving conditions. That means automatic or like a legendary driver. This is, like I said, just exactly that. If I put in 3,900 pounds, and I put in 662 horsepower, which is basically the old GT500. We get a 60 foot of 1.69 in perfect condition, quarter mile, 11 flat at 129.5. That's pretty spot on considering a lot of guys on my channel have said the old one ran 10.9. This says 11 flat. This, is, this calculator with perfect conditions and a good driver or an automatic is spot on. Now, with that being said, let me change the weight over to 4225 and change the horsepower to 760. Now, keep that in mind, 169, 60 foot, 11 flat, quarter mile, 129.5 mile per hour. Now, we're going to go to a 166, 60 foot. So, we're only talking about three one hundredths of a second in the 60 foot, pretty much negligible. You go down here to the quarter mile time, you're at 1085 at 132 miles per hour. Actually, it's 132.057, but so you get to see where that goes. It's only one-tenth faster or a tenth and a half because of the fact that it's over 250 pounds heavier. Now, it does have a DCT, but even with that being said, based on weight specs here, it's perfect shifting. We're only talking about a tenth or two difference from the old GT500. If the old GT500 did 10.7 on drag radials, this might do 10.5. The red eye's done 10.2, 10.3. We're just going based off numbers here. This is not hate, just facts. I'm just keeping it real. Now let's look at the red eye at 44.58, okay? I'll show you guys what I'm doing here in a minute. Uh, 44.58 by 7.97. You get a 167. So the 60 foot's off by three one hundredths of a second. Quarter miles 1087 at 
So the GT500 is gonna trap half a mile an hour faster, but the quarter mile is gonna be identical. Meaning the GT500 has slightly more top end because of the weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off 25 or 30 pounds from the red eye weight, which is what the trunk contents weigh on a red eye. And if I take off those 30 pounds, um, which would be about 44.25, we're looking at a quarter mile 1084 in speed of 132.1. I know this is ridiculous type of uh, hypothetical stuff, but we're only talking about a 30 pound, you know, overweight factor here on the red eye. So if we're comparing the GT500 to the red eye, I really don't think either car is necessarily better than one another. I think we're comparing apples to oranges here. And it doesn't matter which car you own, the GT500 or the Red Eye, they're both epic and you're gonna be happy with either one. So I just think it's time to cut the drum and forget about it. If you're a Mopar guy, Red Eye. If you're a Ford guy, GT500. If you're a car guy like me, it doesn't matter, roll the dice and buy one. Um, you know, I just wanted to point that out. I'm gonna show you guys in a minute here what I'm looking at. I think that, like I said many times, they're both gonna be great, but the weight on the GT500 has taken it from being a potential Red Eye killer to being in the same ballpark. Is that a bad thing? Absolutely not, because the GT500 is probably going to ride considerably better with that extra weight anyway, because weight does make the vehicle ride better. It's just the way it is. It also depended on tires, suspension, a bunch of other stuff, but the lighter the car, the worse it's gonna ride no matter what you do. That's a whole topic that's gonna be for a different day. So I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not hating on the GT500. I was right though, I was right. I'm sorry I had to say that twice here at the end. I said it was 4,200 plus pounds, 4,250, and it's 4,225. I'm gonna look at some comments now, so that's gonna end the video. If you're just watching for the first time, please don't skip the ads. When the video posts to YouTube, watch it, comment, conversations, definitely support the channel. But now I'm gonna check comments for the next couple of minutes. I can answer anything you guys have said. I'm gonna pull my laptop over here. I'm gonna show you guys the calculator that I like to use. Um, it's the quarter mile calculator you can see right here. It basically is horsepower to weight uh, with perfect driving conditions. Obviously, it's hypothetical to a degree because we don't know the conditions of the track of the driver. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted to put that out there. And so, uh, what's up, Kelly? What's going on, Wind? Patrick? I can't wait for my C8 either. I am ordering the C8 Corvette. That's happening. We are going to be doing an epic build in the red eye, kick some butt, go to the drag strip until about November, and then we're picking up the uh, C8 Corvette. I've spec'd it out already. I'm going to be meeting up to place my order real soon with the salesman. The thing is, though, is I don't know if I want to get rid of the red eye or keep it. It's going to depend on subscriber count and, of course, the view count on my YouTube channel. If it's doing better by November, I can keep both. We'll have to see. Um... I'm just looking through comments to make sure I didn't miss nothing here. And it looks like I have missed a lot. <laughs> um, the, the Jamie uh, said that I'm talking about different categorized cars. It'll dominate the red eye. They are different. I'll give you that. Will it dominate the red eye? No. On a drag strip, definitely not. How is a car 37 horsepower deficient and only 200 pounds lighter? It's not. It's just not. With the torque difference and... It's gonna depend on a lot of factors, but no, this is not a red-eye killer. We gotta stop doing that. Let's stop doing that altogether. I know everybody wants to see it dominate the red-eye who loves Ford, and everybody who loves the red-eye wants to see it dominate the GT500. It's a great car. Let's stop benchmarking them together. I know guys like to do that, it's fun, but let's just look at it for what it is, which is a fantastic work of art. And um, I really don't wanna benchmark them anymore. Uh, American Terra says I'm a bench racer. <laughs> I've been racing for 20 years. Like, I want, I want you to tell me how a car that has 37 less horsepower and only weighs 200 pounds less is going to dominate. Go ahead and tell me. Tell me how that's possible. With equal drivers, equal conditions, equal tires. I would, love to, I would love to see that. Do you really think, anybody in this video or anybody watching this think that a 4,225-pound car with 760 horsepower, bone stop, is going to run 10-3? I don't think so. That comes from 20 years of racing. It's not going to happen. This car will run 10.8, 10.9 all day on drag radials, 10.5. I'll give it that. 10.5, 10.6 on drag radials should be no problem. This is not a 10.2 car. It's not. It's heavy. It's very heavy. The red eye is heavy, but it's also got more power and more torque. 
and the transmissions are nearly identical. DCT is fast, but it's not going to be a whole hell of a lot faster than what we've got in the red eye. That's another topic for a different day as well. Um, can't wait for the CUDA, uh, 707 Cat, Roderick, Juvie, uh, Armando, Renee. What's up, Cruz? I just want to say what's up to all my loyal followers. Uh, what's up, Josh? What's up, Larry? I just saw your comment. One of my loyal supporters. What's up, Larry? I hope all is well with your Hellcat. And that Shelby that you have there on the highway that I saw pictures of, it was pretty badass. I like that. Uh, would I buy a Hellcat Durango if Dodge made it? Absolutely, I would buy that. I wouldn't even think about it. It would not be a question. What's up, Miles? I appreciate the uh, super chat. Any 411 on the Angel Red Eye Charger? Uh, the Red Eye Charger is coming. I just don't know when. Uh, the people that contact me still have no real information on exactly when it's coming, but it is coming. I just don't know when yet. I am digging to find that out for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, look, first off, American terrorist, you don't have to call me a moron, okay? It's a 5.2, and you're saying a V8 and a 2.65 TDS? Okay, well, the blower in the red eye is bigger, so that doesn't matter. Anyway, um, it makes 700 of the tire, so does the red eye. It's like 710, 718. We're still 18 wheel horsepower difference in almost the same weight. Like I said, let's just stop this American terrorist. This is not, your name pretty much just gives you bad rep in here as it is. You're terrorizing my chat, okay? So let's not create arguments or heat. They're both separate cars for different things. Let's stop benchmarking them together. I'm just spewing facts here. No hate. I love the car. Um, and plus it's super limited. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I'm just making sure I didn't miss nothing here. Uh, yeah, the DCT, yeah, and an auto weighs more than a manual anyway. I agree, Preston. That does make a lot of sense, and, and it, is, it is the truth. Um, a DCT does make very big difference in cars. Um, yeah, it does. It does make a difference, but considering it's going to be shifting not much faster than the transmission in the red eye, which is like 140 or 150 milliseconds, even with three shifts, you're only talking about 120 milliseconds different going down the quarter mile. That's a tenth of a second. It's not going to make up for 37 horsepower when the weight's all the same. But like I said, I'm not trying to benchmark that, just keeping shit real. Um, so I just would like to see the GT500 way less if we're talking about straight speed. I'm just hoping you guys um, enjoy this. You keep saying dumbass. Like, why do, you, why do you keep, is there a need to like say all this stuff in the chat? It's not the same size. I, I literally just said it's basically the same size. It's like half a liter of difference, like a 274, I think, or 27 versus, uh, or is it 273, I think, versus 265. It's very close. Uh, just stop, stop terrorizing the chat in here with all your nonsense, okay, and try to play me or get me riled up. It's not going to happen. I love the GT500. I love the red eye. Everybody knows I love the red eye. I'm sitting on the hood of my red eye right now. But can my red eye beat a McLaren 720S and a quarter mile bone stock? Nope. And we all know that. So why would you hate on me for putting out facts? All it is are facts. The red eye and the GT500 are about neck and neck in almost every regard when it comes to straight line speed. As far as I see it, the edge going to the red eye possibly because of the torque, the, the torque down low and having slightly better power and the weight not being significantly different. If the GT500 weighed 4,000 pounds, it would, it would be a little bit tougher for the red eye and the GT500 would probably edge it out. It does look to be like it's gonna be slightly better in the top end trap speed due to, uh, you know, like I said, the negligible difference in weight to power ratio, which comes down to be so small, almost unnoticeable in the daily driver would never even see it. Uh, so I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this video. I'm uh, sorry to keep it long. I just wanted to read the comments. I appreciate you guys stopping in with the video post the YouTube comment, like, share. Let's create conversations. Don't skip the ads when it posts to YouTube. Support the channel. I'm getting a C8. If you guys want me to keep the red eye, just support the channel. I'll keep them both and there'll be a lot of content between both cars. Hell, maybe even have my brother come and run one of them and we'll run the C8 against the red eye and see how that goes. That'll be pretty interesting to say the least. Thank you so much, guys, for watching uh, this video. And also check out the video of me racing a ZR1. 
And a lot of people were shocked at that, including myself, but my car was running 100%. It was a manual ZR1, but it weighed 800 pounds less. So give me a break there. And I won by three and a half cars and automatic would not make up three car lengths difference. It would have been a victory either way. A lot of people were saying that it was reeling me in. Not really. We had to go into the turn. We both had to slow down. It would have been rinse and repeat because 60 to 150, the ZR1 couldn't catch me. It was a lot of fun. Met up with the guy, great times over there. Check that video out. We'll see you guys next video. Check out my brother's channel. This can't be happening, all over case one word. And guys, epic video tomorrow. Toyo proxies are coming off. Mickey Thompson's going on. I'm gonna have a comparison video of both those tires. It's gonna be so much fun. I cannot wait to see which tire does better, although I think it's gonna be the Mickey's. And then after that, we've got the Red Eye Build stuff coming earlier next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. Lots of good stuff. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next video. And Definitely share this one. This is going to be a good one. I can't wait to see what comes on in the comment section here about this wait for the GT500. Take care, guys. Have a great day.